Okay, well, let's head for <coughs> Hay Helper. All right. Can you hail? I hail. <laughs> Hey, you got a big sea on the mountain over there. Four carbon. Oh. It used to be carbon college. Oh, and carbon college, but now it's called the College of Eastern Utah. When my dad worked for Utah Power and Light, his office was down here in Price. If they would go out and work on the power lines all the way from the top of Soldier Summit clear down into Moab. Wow. He served that this whole southeastern region. That's why he managed to spend all of his life outdoors and he collected a lot of a lot of old relics, rockwise and Indian arrowheads and stuff and now there's logging and all that. Straight ahead. There's a new place going up right there. Looks like it's going to be a good Inside the restaurant, they've got a model railroad layout with trains going around and around and around. It was built by some dentist that owned the property. Now he's sold it, I think, to somebody else. But telling you when I was growing up your age we didn't have television and computers so we spent all of our spare time outside hiking around all these mountains. Oh wow. I knew every canyon. Grandpa and the names of all the lizards that lived in them. He started out with a section called My Favorite Bikes. <laughs> This road 
Are we going to stop at that cemetery? Huh? Are we going to stop nah, at that cemetery? It's too muddy. I don't think we better stop, Joan. used to be right in here and it burned down. No, wait a minute, not here. Go further. Maybe we're two block ones too far south. Anyway, the Elfner Elementary School is here and it well, there was a street that went through the other block, was that yeah. it? Dog standing in a dry spot. Okay, yes, I recognize it. Turn left. This used to be an old gas That's station right here station. by Pearson Tire. Oh, okay. Lo 
Locust Street. Okay, this park right here used to be the site of where I went to school from the first grade to the uh, sixth grade. And I've got some pictures of the building. I think we can have a picture of it on fire too, don't we, Joan? Is that I think right? So. I think we can. Did we find that on the <laughs> carbon on, site or yeah, something? Yeah. On what? Carbon County. Oh, the website. Yeah. Were you uh, happy when that thing burned wow. down? No, I wasn't. I was long gone. I was married by then. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that was grade school? Yeah, grade school. First through the sixth. I just make a U-turn and go back and we'll go up Main Street. Anyway, stop right here and let's look out. See that mountain range right there, Tyler? Yeah. I've been all over that thing. All over it. <laughs> I just love to look at that mountain. He had a guardian angel with him the whole yeah. time because I don't know how he And I've explored managed. every canyon up there on the top of every Thank one you. of those peaks. <laughs> No. Okay, let's go up Main Street. That's what I'm trying to explain to these boys when we don't let them have all day computer time and cell phones and everything. Get what outside do, and do What do, do we something? do? <laughs> we'll have to go outside. <laughs> This station right here used to have the old hand pump tanks with the glass bottle on top. Yeah. And we'd come by and the school kids and we'd talk to the owner into letting us pump the gas yeah. up into the bottle. of it, there's some old railroad machinery, or mining machinery. Huh. Look, they've got some kind of a mannequin or something in the upstairs of that. In the cupola? No, so, just up in the window. Huh. What's her face? Turn right in here. This is the old, uh, this used to be the depot oh. for the railroad. Come here to get on the train. And when I was just a kid during World War II, the troop trains would stop here and all the soldiers would get off the trains right there and come down and go around the corner right here and there's a grocery store there. Uh -huh. They'd go in and buy big loaves of bread and a couple of gallons of milk. Right. Go back and get on the train. Amtrak. Yep. Oh. I didn't turn around and go back out. But. This is where Grandpa Bonnell had come to stay overnight. Yeah. Grandpa Bonnell had a permanent hotel room in one of these hotels along the street here where he lived in Grand Junction of course but when he would drive the train he'd come up here one day and then stay overnight in the hotel and uh -huh. get on the train and drive it take it back wow. the next day. So the grocery store used to be one of these buildings right here. theater right here, the Strand, it's still there. On the other side was another movie theater that had taken the marquee down. It was called the Bonnie. And that's what I named my computer after. Oh, where it says Gateway Lanes? Yeah. Right there, that used to be a, a movie theater. Huh. Now, I've got a cousin that lived, oh, that's a bank right there. I've got, I've got a, my cousin's son 
lives in one of these houses along the street. I think it's I think it's this one right here. Remember Tony? Oh, you're going past the auditorium. Oh, and there's the old auditorium the, right the there. The big miner guy. Was the this statue. still there? Yes, the giant statue of the miner is yeah. still there. Oh, yeah. And this is the Catholic Church. It's been here since day one. <laughs> Oh my word! Oh, yeah. yeah, just watch the deep gutter right here. Well, what is this? This used to be the Civic Center, but it's the Library you know, City Library now. It's huge. Yeah. Well, it used to be an auditorium where they had civic events in there. Oh, Going okay. down and let's make a right hand turn in the next light here. Alright. Our next street, I mean. Where, where was Hell for Furniture? Where Julie worked? Right along here somewhere, wasn't it? Yeah, on, we're this building with a Coca Cola sign. That used to be Hell for Furniture. Oh, furniture right there. Huh? It says yeah, right on the side. Sign. Helper Family Furniture sense. and Home Company. Hardware company. Hardware? Oh, yeah, yeah hardware. And what says home? It says Helper Furniture and Hardware. I can't see. Oh, H D W E? Yeah. Ah, okay. It's real Please. faint t along the top, towards the top there, Tyler. Oh, it's even, it's better on the back side here. Hardware! Oops. Get a good sweep here. I thought you were going to the swinging bridge. We are. Oh, okay. Just very slowly. <laughs> this uh, stop right here, see that? Veranda right there on that upper level. Yeah, I spent a lot of time up there. I had a friend. My name is Dick Hyatt. His his parents owned and operated a, a, a hotel right there, and they lived on the upper floor. And they had this little tiny, teeny Mexican Chihuahua dog. <laughs> it yapped like crazy. <laughs> anyway, we used to come there all the time and visit him, go hiking together. Yeah. here a little bowery it's got the old okay yeah. up here a little further we're going to stop and park i'm going to show you a suspension bridge that goes across the river okay. we have to cross had to walk across that every day to go to junior high walk across it and go up a big flight of steps to go to the school Park over there where that van is. Okay. Yeah. Just right here. Yeah, just stop now turn. We need to let Tyler get out and walk across that bridge. Yeah. Huh? We'll do it, Tyler. And on the other side of the bridge there were some steps here, going up to the top of the hill. Have to put the you have to put your gear in the park before it. Get in the middle of it. They've got it. They've got a kind of 
fix it so you can't shake it as much, but it's still a shaky bridge. <laughs> well, there's no swinging. Oh, it's got, they fixed yeah, it shaking. differently since we were here. No, it's after. the same. Well, it looks like they've got the, the sides way up. No, it's the same. Oh, okay. Oh, it goes under the road. Huh? Yeah, it goes under the road. And on the on the other side of the highway, there's a big flight of stairs that goes up to the top of the hill to the high school, or okay. junior high. Yeah, we brought the... Thompson. That's when we were here with the Thompsons, and they were determined they were going to get all the way up the stairs, and they did. When they came back, they said, We'd never make it to school. <laughs> Do this every day. Good job, Tyler. No, that wasn't too Did scary, you see the river? It? Yeah, it's very uh, okay. white we watery. <laughs> Wait a second, there's a, like a... The bridge wasn't swinging, it was just monument bouncing. Marker. Monument marker, something over here. Along with a viewing area. What does that say? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't drive down here. Want me to get out? You can't get out there. It's a foot trail. In fact, they have a foot trail oh. along the entire length of the river here. W. W P A P W A. Oh, okay. So that's probably who built the, the swinging bridge, the W P A, during the Depression. Oh, the WPA was... Uh, Works Project Administration. Yeah. Tyler, go take a picture. Wait, park. It's kind of hard to run it. Oh, i got to tell you about this. You can't see it, but the Price River comes gushing through here. Uh -huh. And uh, when we go to school, sometimes we would get on Main Street. Sometimes we'd come on this other street and follow the river down to the school. Yeah. And we went out here one day. No, we were coming through the underpass which we're going to go through here in a second and we found this big giant paper bag I mean it looked like a the kind of bag that you put uh, 50 pounds of potatoes in only it was paper bag not a cloth bag right and we picked it up and looked at it and opened it up went on in and it was clear full of popcorn <laughs> clear full of popcorn we thought man popcorn so we took it and we were on our way to school so we brought it over here by the river took it down by the river bank and hid it oh wow by the trees and after school was out we went up and got the bag and took it home and feasted on popcorn for a week <laughs> we figured it must have fell or fallen off of some truck that was delivering it to one of the movie houses around here but it had no identification at all on it can you read it yeah. It says due to Utah's high unemployment rate during the depression, 63 percent in 1933. 63 percent. Wow. That was during the depression. Federal recovery programs were, were extensive in the state. Virtually every public building constructed in Utah during the 30s was built under one of these agencies. Buildings built in Helper, including the Civic Auditorium, Post Office, and the Junior High, in addition to, in addition to buildings, the federal agencies also mm -hmm. did extensive conservation work, the Price River Channel, behind this monument was straightened and moved to the west and the cribbing and the rock cribbing and rock work you see were installed as one such project. Wow, I didn't know they moved the river. Alright, turn right. 80. 
This white building right Four. here it used to be a grocery store and it was owned by Matt our bishop, uh -huh. Lynn Broadbent. So, uh, after school, all the time we'd stop in here and <clears throat> buy a Coke and a bag of peanuts. And this or this? The one on the left. Okay. Buy a Coke and a bag of peanuts and sit there on the cooler and pass the chew the fat with the bishop for a while before we went home. <laughs> he was our friend. Go straight ahead. Let me have the camera. Uh, Federal Works Agency, Public Works Administration, John W. Carwoody and Franklin D. Roosevelt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt was the president, the other one yeah. didn't have it there. This underpass right here. So was the cooler sitting right there where the paint's a different color? No, it was inside the building. Oh. <laughs> okay. Alright, go where? Go straight ahead. Okay. This underpass that goes under the railroad track is a very unique architecture. And you can find pictures of it on the website. Go to there was a Google search on Helper, and you'll eventually up seeing this. Plus, they have street street view going under the this underpass. No kidding. Yeah, that street view is something else, isn't it? I'll say it's amazing. Mountain View Cemetery, Helper Park. It's Mountain View Cemetery that one you were talking about. No, this is the Helper Cemetery. Oh yeah. And of course, you see these little. Lines along the right here. Yeah. That was tempting to school kids to climb up those, which we did. <laughs> From the street to the top of the railing. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> really were crazy. The lights up there. <laughs> All right, just go straight ahead. There's a cemetery in Helper, but believe it or not, we don't have any relatives wow. buried there. This is Dodge Street right here. We used to sleigh ride down that hill, clear from the top, clear down to here. Wow. And then uh, turn left up here on Ridgeway. That's the next one. Okay. Nothing across this. This was the edge of town. There wasn't a thing here. There's my old house right here where I used to live. Right here? Yep, right on the corner. It's a big shock to Grandpa to come down here to see this great big church right where he used to. On Street View, there used to be, the grass was there's dead stuff. in front of the house there, uh -huh. and there used to be a, there was a for sale sign there. Stop no. now. Let me tell you a little bit. See the basement windows there? Yeah. On the left hand side, well, on the right hand side is where our bedroom was. My dad built a bedroom there for myself and my two other brothers, and then the bedroom was in the northeast corner, and then on the northwest corner was a coal room. Because we burned coal, so they would bring coal in and dump it into that one room. Sure. And on the south southwest corner of the basement was uh, was a food uh, fruit storage room, and then on the south east side was just an empty room with nothing in it. But I set up a little. Uh, I was interested in tanning leather, so I got a big wash tub full of tannic acid and got a deer skin from somebody one time and. <laughs> tanned as deer hide in there. Now that's a story but, I haven't heard before. Yeah. And then look in the back you see there's a big two car garage right there. That was the only at that time that was the only garage on any of these houses in the neighborhood. So my dad would park his car in there on one side and we had a we had our little wood workshop on the other side. 
that's what the lathe that you and Gary yeah. bought. Yeah. And of course, this church out. wasn't here at all, so I could sit on my front porch and look east, northeast, and see the mountains. But if you look straight ahead, see the kind of view I had to look at every day? Yes. You gotta see go climbing. Balance rock. <laughs> gotta get out there, gotta get out there. So let's go up in the parking lot here and then I'll tell you a little more. Oh, and this is actually the second house I used to live in on this street. She, she moved a lot. Okay. Okay. So which one was first? The not 147. The next one belonged to my friend Clyde Hurst. And then the next one, I don't remember its number. I used to live in that house. 173. When I was just a little kid, yeah. Because I remember living in there, coming out on the front lawn and laying on the grass, looking at the take clouds. You picture with your camera. We don't have a picture of this one. Well, I got my camera here. Let me get a good, let me give it to you. I'm sure we don't, I don't think we've ever stopped. Here's a fancy hand hold. <coughs> okay, make a wide turn and turn in this parking lot right here. So, My friend Clyde Hurst that lived next door to me, him and I spent a lot of time together hiking around on these mountains. Uh -huh. He ended up, when he grew up, getting a doctorate degree in, uh, uh, what was it, botany or something. He worked on the NASA program for a while. Just pull up and, and back into one of these spots right here so we can look in the mountains. All right. But what was he doing down in Richfield? Was he with the Forest Service? Or was he retired and moved down there. Remember, he he was the county agent over in Cache Valley after he got done with Nassau. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. Of course, Balance Rock. And you know the story about my dad and his friends getting on top of that and planting the uh, pole with the oil drum full of rocks. They tried to flag but the wind tore the shreds in short order so they left their mark up there by putting an oil barrel full of rocks. <laughs> I can't see anything up there now. Oh, I Wait, can. who did? Can you? Yeah. Who put a barrel of rocks on? My dad and all of his friends. How old were they? If you ha we don't have time don't today know. but if, we, if you ever go to that railroad museum that we went past here in Helper they have a the newspaper articles and some pictures about it. Really? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to show you some. Okay, whoops. See that cliff up there with a little pockmark hole in it right there? Yeah. That's called Indian Cliff. And on top of that, we've hiked up on top of that many times and we found all kinds of Indian relics, mostly pottery. How'd you get up there? The other side? The other side of it, yeah, on either side. We always went over on the east side of it and went up. And then straight up from that,
see here see the Indian cliff right there and then you see that cut that comes down and in right there yeah all right uh, one day and if you look straight ahead you see that hump up there you can't see it but it looks like there's a little cave up there my friend and I looked at that for years and was wondering what that cave was uh -huh. and so one Sunday in Sunday school <laughs> we planned a hiking trip uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so right after Sunday school we come home and got some ropes <laughs> And decided we was going to go hike up to that uh, cave. Of course, the only way you can get to is get clear on top, that very highest point, and let yourself down on ropes. Yeah, yeah. So we I borrowed some ropes from my dad. <laughs> and uh, the only way you can get on top of that mountain is you have to go up this canyon over here to the right. Uh -huh. Where's the cave? Over there. See where I'm pointing? Yeah. These trees are blocking the road, but there's a canyon goes up there and it ends and it no, branches off three different ways. He wants to know where ways. the cave is. Oh, it's straight ahead. It's straight ahead. You can't see the cave very well right now because the sun's not right. I don't, actually, I don't think it's a cave, but it always looked like it. I think it's just a shadow of an overhang or something. Uh -huh. So anyway, we, Clyde and I and our dog, my dog, Cocker <laughs> Spaniel, hiked up that mountain, got clear up on top, and then hiked over and got up on that hot, very highest hump up there. And uh, then we stopped and had our lunch. And then we decided, okay, let's let ourselves down on ropes now and go to that cave. And we both admitted to each other that we don't know how to climb ropes. Right. <laughs> and we're afraid we'd fall off, so we decided against it. How old were you? Probably... 12, 13. Oh, so we decided, it. and the sun was setting, starting to set. Uh -huh. So we said, there's no way we can get home the same way we come up here. Let's take this shortcut <laughs> in this area right here. Uh -huh. Just up right above that Indian cliff right there. You see where it comes down? Yeah. Well, if you, we've studied that for years and noticed that there was a little tiny trail that went along the ledge right there and then come down. Uh -huh. Looks like it's all eroded off now, but... So we went over there and come down, and the, the trail got extremely narrow. And we had to put our backs against the wall and walk sideways. Yeah. And the, the cliffs were above us about a couple hundred feet, and then you had the big drop off of about 500 feet before you hit anything. And we, we inched our way for, as far west as we could, and then there was a kind of a rock slide there blocking the way. Yeah. And we decided we can't get past this. It's getting dark. So, and besides that, we come to realize that we were breaking the Sabbath. Yeah. We were out on Sunday hiking. Yeah. So both of us said a prayer while we were standing there. Prayed for Heavenly Father to help us get back off this mountain. And if he'd help us get off the mountain, we would never break the Sabbath again. <laughs> <laughs> so we went back up on top of the mountain. And, and you had to go north and east to get to the nearest canyon to come down. By that time, the sun had set and it was dark, but there was a full moon out. Uh -huh. So we were able to find our way down in the dark with the full moon. Wow. But this canyon right here, it's a, it's a dead end canyon, it's a box canyon. And if we had, that's why I wanted you to bring your laptop because we could look on Google Earth and I could zoom in on the canyon and show you that sure. there's a right hand fork, a left hand fork, and the middle fork. Right. And uh, and to come off that, you had to go up kind of a rocky ledge. But there was a big drop off in one spot, but there was a little footpath from one spot where you could go and walk up there. And in order to get clear of the top, you had to lay some dead tree branches up against some of the smaller cliffs and crawl up those tree trunks to get wow. up on top of it. So that's how we would get up and down that thing. And then some of the other canyons, we found some abandoned coal mines. And then the right-hand fork, there's a big dry waterfall up there at the end of the box canyon. And uh, but we could get up that by laying a big dead tree against the cliffs and crawling up the tree. And then we went from there clear up to the <coughs> tallest peak that you can see between these two peaks right here. Uh -huh. And then we went from there down into Helper, or uh, Kenilworth. 
And also, it's not there now, but there used to be a railroad track that followed the mountain here, the foot of the mountain, and it went clear over to the east here, and then it would turn and went south and looped around some of those cliffs <coughs> over there to go over into Kenilworth. And then one other thing, up on top of that mountain on the right-hand side, see this peak right here that kind of looks like an Indian face? It's got a little feature to it. It looks like a straight mouth coming back. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we call that Indian Peak, but right above that on top of it and back in to the northwest a little bit, there's an old coal mine that caught on fire years ago. And it burned for many, many years. And... Uh, you could walk over the top of that and all the vegetation around it was dead and you could you could smell and feel the rancid smell of burning coal right incomplete combustion coming out of those Current cracks up there yeah wait it caught on fire but it still was like on fire yeah when it, when a coal mine catches on fire there's no way to put it out and it would actually burn for years and years and years and years. And then, of course, this mountain range right here is the one that I caught on fire. <laughs> uh, right. You see where those power lines over there? Yeah. Okay, well, that's the power lines that my dad worked on. I had to maintain to keep power going to the coal mining camp. Uh -huh. And it was over in that area right there that we went up, decided we wanted to sleep out one night so we went up earlier in the day laid our sleeping bags out and we discovered there was an ant hill <laughs> right in the place where we wanted to sleep oh, that's right. so we gathered up a whole bunch of dry grass and piled it on top of the <laughs> ant pile to burn the ants up so we started the ant hill on fire with all Aww, this grass you guys are and then we then we come home to wait till dark so we can go back up and sleep <laughs> We got back home a couple hours later. We looked up there, and that whole side of the mountain was burning up. Oh. And we figured, oh, our fire got out of control. <laughs> Wasn't in control to begin with, anyway. A couple yeah. knucklehead kids like up there. You. Light it and leave it. Light it and left it. <laughs> you are officially crazy. Yeah, but we had fun doing it. <laughs> so, did you get in trouble for that? No. How many things did you get away with? How many did you got away with? <laughs> hey! So did you ever tell anybody you did it? The whole town knew about it because we come home and called the fire department. Oh. And uh, they organized a whole bunch of volunteers to go up there with shovels. They couldn't get up there with any equipment. There was no road. So yeah. the whole city went up there with their shovels and rakes <laughs> and put the fire out. Because I was afraid that the fire was going to burn one of them power poles down. Then I'd really be in trouble. Yeah. Well, on this one where you and Clyde went up there on Sunday when you came back, is that the one where your family was had organized the search party? They were getting, ready, getting ready, to. ready to. We didn't tell them where we was going. And they never ask us. They just know we're up in the mountains somewhere. Well, when it started getting dark and we weren't home, they were starting to get a little concerned. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a casual upbringing or what <laughs> so anyway none of these houses were here and this church parking lot wasn't here in fact right here in this spot right where that white uh, canister it that white uh, trash thing was uh, was a bunker hill it was a big giant natural dirt mound right there and it was so, it was, I think the height of it was probably level with the top of that swamp cooler on that, that house over there. And we would climb up on that and call that our bunker hill. And we uh -huh. would fly kites from there, catch the wind and fly kites always towards the west over the city. But they came in and took it all out and built this church here and ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you live lived in that other house for how long and then went where and well this first house that's the first house I ever remember and we probably lived there I, I think I was 10 years old because my mother showed me a picture that she took of me standing out in front of that house holding a birthday cake on my 10th birthday oh. so it wasn't too long after that that 
my dad my folks bought the house on the corner from the guy that built all these houses mm -hmm. his name was uh, Hunter and he built all these houses and then the guy that built the houses moved to Salt Lake but we, we bought that house from him it was his house moved into it and then that's spent a good many years there so from 10 years old to to what 14 four years I guess just four or five years when I lived there uh -huh. it seemed like forever when you're a kid and then I went I went to Grand Junction when I was 14 years old is that and when my parents, parents got divorced yeah no so they got divorced earlier well I divorced that. earlier than that I lived in that house alone with my dad well, my mother was gone for a couple of years, and he married. I see, he got married in '52. And I went to Grand Junction in '54. And I don't remember who who's in Grand Junction or what was in Grand Junction that you went to down there. That's where Jim lived. Oh, okay. Yep, up on L. Sure. All right. Because he run the train from Grand Junction to Prot to help her. And you stayed there how long? Huh? And how long did you live in Grand Junction? After I graduated from high school on the 6th of June, <coughs> 1956, I left home, come out to Price and worked that summer for my grandpa, and then I went up to Provo and went to school at BYU for one quarter, and then... While I was going to school there, I was working in a machine shop. No, it was before I, I went to school. When I was in Grand Junction, I worked in a machine shop from last year of high school, so I got the good machining experience. Uh -huh. And when I was going to school up in Provo, there was an ad in the paper that Roar Aircraft in Chula Vista, California wanted machinists desperately. And I decided I wanted to be a machinist more than I wanted to go to school. Mm -hmm. So I went down and interviewed with him, and they signed me up. And the next thing I knew, I was moving to uh, I moved to uh, Chula Vista, California, in 19 f January of 1957. And I worked at Roar Aircraft for probably a few months. And uh, of course, I was very ambulatory then, but I was having attacks with the muscles. Sure. And we had a safety meeting one time, and they emphasized the importance of safety. So I thought, well, I better tell this safety officer about my condition, just oh, in case they yeah. wonder sometime when I'm sitting down and I can't get up. Right. And boy, their eyes come wide open when I told them that, and the next thing I knew, I was out of a job. They <laughs> fired me. <laughs> so I come back, come back to Utah and went to Provo, Oh, because while I was going to school in Provo, I had a part-time job in a machine shop up there. So I went back to Provo and got my old job back and worked full-time for a few years. Did and I moved to Provo, and work? then I moved from Provo to to Salt Lake and worked for Litton Industries. Hmm. That's where I met your mother up there working. So, You both worked at Litton? No. No, we oh. lived in the she same She worked bar. for the county. Oh, okay. When they interviewed you, didn't they know about your muscle disorder? No, we didn't feel a need to tell them either because it is uh, if you work it right, you can you don't have any trouble while you're on the work, but as you get older, then it manifests itself where it's a little more obvious. They weren't uh, required to to um, there was no ADA <laughs> in those days. So What's ADA? American Disabilities Act. That requires them to make things accessible and um, accommodate your problems and so forth. So if they didn't think you were going to work, they could fire you. Anyway, it's too bad it's raining because we could get out and take a whole bunch of pictures. And I take you, there's a spot down here on the south that I'd really like to get a good picture of this mountain because I want to have it. I want to have. Um, Mike Kelly down in Fruta printed out on his big machine. And I want to oh. put a mural in the garage, but I want a blue sky background, not a yeah. 
not a gray sky. So Mike's in Fruga, huh? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. He owns a print. print All right, shop. let's um, let's leave here and I'll, we'll do a little more sightseeing. I'll show you where we used to go to church before this church was built. Of course, I never went to church here. The old church I went to is a little further east, a couple blocks. Okay, so go where? Go straight ahead and then go right. And then well, if I go straight turn. ahead, I'll hit that house. Huh? <laughs> turn right? Yeah. Okay. And when I was living here, the street was not paved and we did not have curb and gutter. Uh -huh. And a little mini sidewalk. No sidewalks either. <laughs> Now turn left. I had another good friend that used to live right here on the corner. His house, his name was Jay Brent Mabrito, and we used to, he had some boxing gloves, and we always get together and would have a little boxing match. Oh, he didn't, uh, that Velasquez guy lived down here too? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Lee, Lee, and, Lee Julian, and Archie, and Archie and Julian and Julian. That's straight ahead. This is the top of that hill right there is where Dr. Danham used to live, the richest man in town. And we'd go up on top of that hill and sleigh ride it all the way down. Wow. These houses have always been here. And I had a lot of friends with Greek names. There was a one that lived right here. What the heck was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Okay, right here on this corner where this house is, uh -huh. used to be a church. Big brick building. My grandpa Kelly helped build it. Is this wall left ahead. over from it? Yeah, that, that wall is still there. Wow. And there was parking in front here. We didn't have curb and gutter. Street was paved. Go straight ahead. The lot looks a lot smaller than it did. Yeah. With church on it, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just kind of stop right here for a minute. When I was living here, this road was not here at all. This is the old canal right here, and it's now I think it's buried. Yeah. But we would come from the church and. Climb out over a fence and follow the canal bank up here part ways and then see where that power pole is. We would stop and turn left and come down that hill and then you see this house right over here to the left with the uh -huh. swamp cooler on top and yeah. the chimney. That house belonged to my grandma and grandpa Kelly. Oh. Grandpa actually brought that house in here from I can't remember where Ber Aunt Ber Bernice said, one of the old coal mining camps. Wasn't it out? Uh, it, he sawed it in place? half and brought it down here What's and put the it place there. Where Martin, wasn't it? Yeah, Martin. Martin. Yeah. Just outside of yeah. Elkhorn. So this is 60 B Street right here, and right here on the left-hand side where that tree is uh, was a big railroad caboose okay. that he brought in for a garage. And there's a gas line there now, but we didn't have gas then. We, it was heated with coal. Uh huh. So I've got pictures of our family standing out in front of this house uh, at a family reunion. And his name was Liddell? George Liddell, yeah. Liddell, okay. Now if you look straight ahead and to the left over there, you see that big white building? Yeah. That's the junior high where I went to high school. Junior high. And that's at junior high. That's where we went to school. And that was the top of that. You cross the swing and oh, bridge. Oh, up the big stairs. Huh? Yeah, you go up that big flight of stairs. <laughs> to that building. That's where I we had wood. I learned woodworking in that school. We had a nice, real nice wood shop there. Because this is a railroad town, I fell asleep every night to the sound of steam.
steam engines coming through and the steam and making up trains crashing and banging, <laughs> coupling all the cars together. Yeah. And it was music to my ears. A lot of people would complain about it. Right. Wow. Well, which way? Right. This house right up here by the stop sign. I had a friend there by the name of Frank Kranz that lived there. His dad owns Kranz Motor Dealership in Price for a good many years. And I came through here a few years ago and went to visit him, but found out it was dead. Mm. Both the father and the son, Frank. Oh, and I also used to deliver papers uh -huh. all over this city here. Wow. Clear up that road to the end of the road and over on the east side, clear up on the highest hill, along with my brother Gary and I shared, shared the route. Had a good workout. Huh? <laughs> Which way? Left, across the tracks. On Sundays, our dad would take us out. He'd drive the car, uh -huh. and we would stand on the running board and deliver the big papers. Uh -huh. Never had to get in the car. We just stood on the running board and jumped off and right. run over and delivered the papers. This lumber yard has always been here. It's amazing. And this big overpass right here is brand new. It's the first time we went across it today, turn right. 